Hey, everybody, I'm really excited about this podcast, the Lights Camera Pro podcast, but it is a ton of work. If you do enjoy the podcast, go to my coffee page, coffee.com. It's ko fi.com backslash the Lights Camera Pro podcast. Then there you can donate $3, a dollar, whatever you want, but anything you can donate will help me continue making this podcast. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Sean Ventura. I am here to tell you about my new online course. It's called Secrets of How to Start a Podcast. It is $49 US. You can see these courses for up to $1,000. If you're about to start a podcast, I will tell you what to do step by step and give you all my secrets and you can launch one in 30 days. Go to thinkific.com, search Secrets of How to Start a Podcast. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day. Hey, everybody, this is Sean Ventura with the Lights Camera Pro Podcast. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 8, The Rescue. As we know, this is the season finale for Season 2, and everyone is very excited because we're all trying to find out what's going to happen to baby Yoda. He's on Gideon's ship. We all, we all want to know if there will be a rescue, like the title says, or something else happens. Uh, we're expecting possibly a Jedi to come. There's going to be lots of pr- surprises, I'm sure. Who are they going to team up with? Let's see. It's going to be fun. Here we go. Okay, so I usually don't do this, but we're going to talk about the recap because the recap is amazing. We go back and see everything that happened in season two from Moff Gideon on the ship and Bo-Katan and Ahsoka Tano. And we see the episode where the child is being taken by the dark troopers. We see the Razor Crest blow up, which is devastating. We love that ship. And finally, Mando's last hologram message in the end of the last episode where he says, he means more to me than you'll ever know to Moff Gideon. And Moff Gideon is a little bit nervous because he knows that Mando is coming. Okay, so we open up on our team in Boba Fett and the spaceship Slave One. Boba Fett's ship is attacking an Imperial fighter who has Dr. Pershing on board, who is the scientist who was doing the blood tests on baby Grogu earlier in the series. Well, Boba Fett and his ship take over the Imperial fighter by hitting them a few times and saying that they're coming on board. One of the Imperial fighter pilots has a back and forth with Cara Dune about her planet Alderaan and how the Imperial forces blew it up and killed hundreds of thousands of her people and he won't shut up and finally she tells him several times to shut up and she just blasts him. Boba Fett and Mando land on a planet and find Bo-Katan and Koska Reeves in a bar. There's a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of tension and threat between Boba Fett and Koska, but... Bo-Katan tells her to sit down. Mando tells Bo-Katan that he has Moff Gideon's coordinates. Bo-Katan agrees to help, but she says Moff Gideon has something of mine that I want. And Mando says, you can have whatever you want, just help me get the child. So Boba Fett and Koska Reeves keep chiding each other, going back and forth, teasing each other, and finally they get into a fight. There's a little bit of scuffle, but... Bo-Katan and Mando say, okay, let's go. Let's move on. Once they get on the ship, Bo-Katan gets this 3D lighted up printout of Moff Gideon's ship, and they go over a plan to get the child back. Dr. Pershing, who was the scientist who did the blood experiments on baby Yoda, tells them where the child is on the ship and where the dark troopers are and tells them that they're 100% droids and they're very powerful and they only have about seven minutes to get to them before they are charged and they can attack. After that, it's gonna be very hard to take on these 20, 25 dark troopers. So they go on hyperspace and they come out of it and they act like Slave One is attacking the Imperial fighter and Boba Fett is Actually, Mando is back on Slave One, and everyone else is in the Imperial fighter, and they request permission to land, and the captain of Moff Gideon's cruiser says, no, you can't land, and they crash anyway, and they come out and blow up all these stormtroopers. As the team goes off to find the dark troopers, which they keep showing 
you know, images of them. They're super scary and they're huge and they have these guns and they're getting ready. I mean, they're almost fully charged. Mando lands on Slave One and goes off to find baby Yoda somewhere on the ship. Well, somehow Mando is going towards baby Yoda or Grogu's cell and he comes upon the dark troopers. They are coming out of their cell and they're about to fight and he closes the door on them, but one of them gets out. They continue to have a fight and Mando is losing badly. He's using his fire. He's using his bullets. He's using everything he can and he's getting beaten really bad by this dark trooper who is smashing his face in with his fist. Well, of course, Mando prevails and he unlocks the hatch that goes to outer space and all the dark troopers get sucked out. So we've gotten rid of that problem for the time being. There is a funny little scene in Elevator where the team is moving to a different floor and we see Cara Dune getting ready to fight with this huge gun, but it, it's jammed and she keeps smashing it on the floor and finally she gets it to work, but it's, it's a hilarious scene. The team comes out of the elevator with Cara Dune's huge gun blazing and everyone else behind her. And it's just a fantastic scene. Cara Dune is just so badass and they kill a bunch of troopers. Mando finds Grogu in his cell handcuffed, but there is someone else there. Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon has the dark saber up above Grogu's head ready to strike. And Mando says, what do you want? Moff Gideon says the saber used to belong to Bo-Katan and I don't really want the child. I just wanted to study his blood. You can take him and he tricks him and attacks him and they get into a fight. Well, the Beskar staff or spear that he got in a previous episode, which is 100% Beskar, comes in handy because he fights Moff Gideon and defeats him with the spear. There's kind of a convoluted scene that's happening here. Mando takes Moff Gideon back to the control room or bridge, and Baby Yoda is there, and Cara Dune comes over and greets Baby Baby Yoda, and um, everybody's happy. But then Moff tells Mando that he can't give the Dark Saber to Bo-Katan because whoever owns it and becomes the leader of Mandalore has to do it through a fight. And because they just fought and he lost... Mando is the heir to the Mandalore throne, not Bo-Katan. And Bo-Katan won't take the saber from him. He's like, here, have it. I don't want it. But because of this folklore, she doesn't take it. So Koska Reeves says, we have company and it's the dark troopers and they're coming back from space. They're flying back and they're landing on the ship and they're coming, you know, two at a time all 20 of them towards the bridge and all seems lost. Uh, Mando could barely take one of them. I don't know how five of them are going to take 20 of them. And Moff Gideon says, once they get through that door, they're trying to breach the door of the bridge. Everyone in this room will be dead but me. So the team gets ready. They point their guns towards the door. The, The dark troopers are smashing the door in. They're beating it and it's bending And all seems to be lost. It's like, how are they going to get out of this one? And all of a sudden, an X-Wing fighter comes flying by the window. And it's like, what is that? They're like, X-Wing fighters trying to land. And there's one person inside. You're like, oh, great. We're saved. (laughs) I think someone might actually say that. Oh, great. We're saved. Or maybe that was a meme I saw on the internet. Um, But we see very quickly that the person getting off of... The X-Wing fighter is a Jedi and he has a hood on or she has a hood on and it's like, oh my God, who is that? Is that Luke? Is that Ahsoka? Is that some different Jedi? Um, Is it someone from the previous trilogy? Who is it? And can they actually help them or are they just going to, you know, get killed by these dark troopers? Well, everyone is watching on the monitor and the Jedi is just going through these dark troopers like they're stormtroopers. He's cutting them in half, cutting their heads off, smashing them against walls and just flying through them, even though they're trying to attack him. And he gets closer and closer. And it looks like his skin may be green in one shot. It looks like it may be Luke in another. We're all dying to find out who this is. 
Well, as he's making it to the bridge and going through the dark troopers, baby Yoda or Grogu is putting his hand to the monitor as if he knows him and is excited for him to be here and can't wait for him to get to the bridge. He gets all the way to the door and the very last trooper he kills in a very strange way. He kind of just puts his hand out and squeezes his fist and the whole thing sort of starts barking and exploding and he just crushes in on himself. Mando has seen what Grogu has been doing with the monitor and he knows that the person that's coming is on their side and they're safe. So he says, open the doors and Cara Dune says, are you crazy? We don't know what that thing is. And Mando says something, I'm paraphrasing, but something like he's the same species as the child. So just let him in. And the door opens and there's smoke and he has this hood on. You can't see his face. It's like, come on, show me his face. Who is it? And he lifts his hood and it's Luke Skywalker, but young Luke, not old Luke from many, many years ago, like in his 20s from the first Star Wars. And it's a CGI face de-aging thing or something like that and it doesn't look perfect but it looks pretty close and it's very exciting Grogu looks at Luke as if he knows him Mando says are you a Jedi and Luke says yes Luke says come little one Mando says he doesn't want to go with you Luke says he wants your permission Luke says he will not be safe until he masters his abilities Mando says that Grogu needs to go with Luke because they are the same kind. Grogu is lifted up into Mando's arm and Grogu reaches for his face and Mando takes off his helmet and Grogu touches his face and essentially says goodbye. Pedro Pascal, who plays the Mandalorian or Din, his eyes start to water. Well, Luke takes Grogu and... R2-D2 comes in and uh, does a little talk with Grogu and they laugh and joke a little bit. And um, everybody, I'm sure, at home is so excited to see R2-D2. Let me say this. I've done a review of this entire second season, every episode. And I know this is very emotional for a lot of people, but I think it's the right thing for Mando to do and let Grogu go and work on his powers and he will become more safe. I think it's emotional because these two have had such a tight bond throughout this series and it's what makes this series so great and why everyone watches it, their father-son relationship and that a killer or a bounty hunter or someone who, you know, doesn't have a lot of morals um, somehow cares for another being. There is a close up on Pedro Pascal or the Mandalorian where his eyes are filled with tears and it's kind of over the top, but it's also very fitting for this episode because it's kind of like when your kid goes to college, you're giving them away and trusting them in the hands of another person that you don't really know, but you know it's the right thing to do. Okay, so let's wrap it up with my rating. Uh, A lot of people on the internet are saying that Peyton Reed from Ant-Man movies, the director of the Ant-Man movies, directed this and didn't do a good job. I don't know why they're saying that. I think it was an excellent episode, and I've never done this before, but I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. It is a perfect episode from start to finish, but really the last five minutes is something you didn't get in all the the new Star Wars trilogy and Rogue One and um, Solo. It's essentially that there is a connection between these two beings that is so strong that it gives the episode in the series emotional weight. And that's why I gave it a 10. And yes, all of the details of the ships and the dark troopers and the dark saber and all of these great... um, Characters like bo and Ahsoka Tano and um, Cara Dune is amazing. I mean, it's such an amazing group of characters. And then all the special effects creatures and the whole thing is fantasy and sci-fi. Really, really well done. Um, so I give it a 10 out of 10. Now, as you know, this is the last episode in the season two 
of the Mandalorian series, and season three doesn't come out till Christmas 2021. So we have a full year before there'll be any more Mandalorian episodes. But the Obi Wan series is coming up early in the year next year. Um, there's a couple other series that are coming up, and then um, I think the Boba Fett series that they teased at the end credits of this episode with Fennec Shand is coming up on Christmas 2021 also. But this is Sean Vitor from the Lights, Camera, Pro podcast. I also do other reviews of movies and TV shows, so check those out. Keep coming back, and um, I will be ready to do Season 3 next year. But until then, thanks so much for listening, um, and I will see you next time. Hey, everybody. I'm really excited about this podcast, the Lights Camera Pro podcast, but it is a ton of work. If you do enjoy the podcast, go to my coffee page, coffee.com. It's ko-fi.com backslash the Lights Camera Pro podcast. And there you can donate $3, a dollar, whatever you want. But anything you can donate will help me continue making this podcast. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hey guys, I just wanted to tell you about something. I've made a children's book. It's called Feldman Runs Away. If you search Feldman Runs Away on Amazon, you will find it in the Kindle store. And it's the story of my cat Feldman ran away several times to only find out that he was always home. If you know someone who has kids or you like children's books, check out Feldman Runs Away. Thanks to Joseph McDade for the music.